So, the topic of practicing is something that's been a bit more in the limelight recently, I would say, with the terrible run Envias had in uh, Katowice, you know, the, the good run from the Brazilian teams, uh, Luminosity, of course, and also the Mongols who managed to win IEM Taipei and qualify for Katowice, right? We also had a tweet from MSL, the, the Dignitas in-game leader, who said that finally he has uh, teammates who are willing to do dry runs on the server for, for a couple of hours even. So talking about practicing as a team and as an individual, right? Uh, as an individual, there are a lot of things you can do to improve your game, right? Which are not that much fun. Certainly not as fun as just playing that match and screaming with your team, right? First and foremost probably is reviewing your own demos from official games, right? Or even from practice games when you just look back at the game and uh, you can obviously, if it's been, uh, you know, if it happened closely, you can obviously remember the comms as well in the situation and then reviewing your own game, you can, you know, maybe see things, oh, why would I do that? Maybe, you know, or, or just take take notes as, okay, when, when this happens, I probably should do something else and so on. So just try it. Trust me, you will learn a lot uh, about your own game. And uh, also what I think uh, players maybe don't do nearly enough as they should is, let's say if you're playing a certain spot, it doesn't matter if it's T or CT side, right? Let's say you're playing a CT uh, arch side position on Inferno, right? So you should think about what are the most common situations you will find yourself in, right? You're obviously the first player from A that will rotate to the B side. You're the, the player who's there to defend the uh, wrap. You're the player who's supposed to help his teammates uh, towards short and, and apps. If you're playing, if you have a teammate rotating over from B, that, that he will take care of long, right? So you should think about those situations and maybe practice the most optimal nades you can throw in that situation, right? So you don't just throw a random flash, you throw the best possible flash you can find in that situation because that's something that people maybe don't, uh, don't understand properly that... You know, throwing good nades can make your life so much easier, right? Because if you, if you obviously, if you have to fight someone who is fully flashed, it's going to be much easier than just going for a straight up duel, right? So those are some, uh, maybe some of the, the main aspects you should try. And, and that's something you do by yourself on a server. Maybe ask a teammate to help you out to just uh, hold some angles to see if he's properly flashed and so on. And then you should try and... and uh, implement this stuff in practice and then later on in official games, right? This is something, uh, two more things that are really important. One that I'm going to mention a lot of times is focused. You have to be focused in practice so that not just focused on what you're doing, focused on what's happening on the map as well so you can read the game better, right? If you're just focused on your crosshair, you're not really practicing that much. I mean, you're practicing your aim maybe and uh, that's it, you know, and that's not going to be enough when it comes to tier one Counter-Strike, right? So it's being focused so that what you're doing in practice, you're going to do the same thing uh, in the official games. And this is the second word that's really important is consistency, right? We mentioned it, we mentioned it on the desk a lot as well, how some players are really good, but at times inconsistent. And in my opinion, uh, this is something that can stem from practice as well, right? Because how do you, how can you maybe improve your consistency if it's not a psychological problem that the that the player just crumbles in in high pressure games, right? You should try and obviously do the things in practice which are you gonna which you're gonna repeat then in official games, right? Because if you do something all the time, you're gonna get used to it. You're gonna be comfortable with doing it. You're gonna get used to the angles and so on. Let's say an example from from sports, right? Let's say NBA and Steph Curry, the, 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 the most amazing player right now, probably makes, you know, six three pointers all the time and makes it look so easy. But he's probably made, I don't know, millions of those three pointers in his career in practice and so on. So when he comes out of that pick and roll, when he comes out of that screen, it's something it's 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 automated for him right at, at that point it's the same uh, arc the same you know wrist movement the same uh, height jump or or whatever you know it, it's the same every time because of how many times he practiced it up until that point you know it's something that that you should try and 
uh, utilize in, in Counter Strike as well, right? Maybe that probably that's gonna help you be more consistent because those you are in situations that you're comfortable in, right? You you know what to expect maybe to an extent as well. When it comes to practicing as an individual within a team, right? It's a bit different in a sense that okay, you're focused on your own game, but you're also you're, the main point is that you know your team improves, right? And you're figuring out figuring out ways how you can help your team win the round and, and what's the best move you can do not for yourself but for your team. And uh, when you're not focused, you, you get into situations like let's say uh, train, right? You're playing the CT side, you're the B player, your team went for an aggressive push ivy they got maybe even two entry kills so you're in a 5v3 situation the terrorists react by pushing b straight away because that's basically the only thing they can do right hope to get a free kill there then get the bomb plant and maybe try and salvage the round from there but as a b player you should be aware that the only thing you should do in that situation is just stay alive and buy time for your team to rotate in you have the numbers advantage it should be a pretty straightforward round for you right but if you're not focused you might just keep holding an angle and then you just die. I mean, you just lose a duel or, or whatever and you give uh, the T's entrance into the bomb site, and then they win the round and so on. Obviously, this is not important. That I mean, this is not that important result-wise in a practice game because you're just practicing. The problem is, if this is a recurring theme, then it's something that's bound to happen in an official game. And if you lose a round like that in an official game, it can cost you the game because we always talk about how Counter Strike is a game where, you know, a team who wins the, the few crucial rounds will, will end up winning the game. A team who makes uh, less mistakes will win the game, and so on. And this is where we can see maybe, you know, problems uh, in a team as well. It also comes down to uh, working with your teammates on a bomb site, right? Let's say. Uh, Mirage, right? The T's go for a, uh, a smoke strat with those smokes towards the site and then push towards the uh, connector and jungle. So if you have, <coughs> sorry, if you have a player, let's say in shadow and a player in CT, maybe maybe one player wants to push through the smoke, the other player wants to play passively if they don't have a, a an agreement on how to do it, if they don't have a plan, and that's when you lose rounds like that. When you when when the players are not. Uh, playing for each other but almost against each other in a way because they're not sure what each of them wants to do and that all stems from practice right from from having an agreement in practice okay if if this happens let's try and do that and then you see if it works like the most common uh maybe a good example is, is also defending a mid to b split on dust too right you have a, two players that that are on that side of the map uh, most oftenly and then they have to make a deal okay so are we gonna focus mid with both guys are we gonna maybe save a smoke so you can smoke off doors and watch window and i'll watch tunnel for you are we gonna try and push tunnels together so that's a a good example of maybe how you should work you know you, you can't just have one player alone watching mid and one player alone watching tunnels without any sort of a deal because you know they're probably gonna get overrun at that point they're gonna lose the round and looking, and you, when you have teams who think that when they lose a round by playing like that, they think, oh, we just didn't hit our shots. It, it has nothing to do with shots. You just, your your uh, idea coming into that round is bad, and any good team will capitalize on that and will punish you for that, right? But when it comes to tier one teams and, and also practicing as a team, right? Why do we say that probably Luminosity is the best team at practicing right now? Because you can see in every tournament, they bring out something new as a team and also players have some you know new angles they bring out some new stuff and you can see that when they practice they are practicing to improve that's the only goal they have they they are focused and they try their hardest to improve and you have teams who maybe at times just play to win which may not necessarily be bad because you know in an official game you're playing to win so if you practice to win then you know play to win and so on but it should be in a sense that you know you're trying really hard in practice so that you can win not just you know go for the same moves all the time because if you're not able to do that move if someone counters you then you don't have anything else to fall back to right so you should always try from time to time to implement new things and when you also think about how these teams at times complain that they don't have enough time which is true they don't have enough time to practice because of all the tournaments official matches and so on 
then it's like the little time you have, you should use it the most productively you can, right? I'm always, uh, I, my opinion is always that quality beats quantity when it comes to practice. If you practice 10 hours a day, but you're not focused enough, you know, players are thinking about something else, I don't know, then you basically wasted 10 hours. You know, it, it's just like that. But if you have maybe four hours of quality practice where you learn something after each scrim, you know, then it's really good. You should always also review your games as a team, right? Where the in-game leader will probably be the one who does most of the talking so he can say, okay, you know, Fallen can say, oh, Taco, you see, in this situation, you're not supposed to do this. You should do this because on the other side, we have Cold and FNX doing their thing. And, you know, you, I, you know, from his point, from, from your point of view, that, that was maybe the best thing. But, you know, realizing what's going on uh, on the map as a whole, you know, it wasn't the best thing, right? And, you know, you have teams who do this, but then again, it comes to focus. You can have players sitting there looking at the screen, but they're basically looking through the screen, right? They're, they're looking at it, but they're not concentrated. They're not focused. You know, it comes in the one ear, goes out the other, right? They're not uh, thinking about what's happening. So that's also obviously really important. That's when you have a team like Canvas. We saw MBK in that interview saying that with every practice, we got worse, you know, and but... I mean, what are you going to do then? Play less? That's not going to help you improve in a way. I, I think it then comes down to the players and, and the team to, you know, uh, be adults about it and, and work on it and maybe take one day off to reset and then come back refreshed, right? Focused on on playing the game because you can't just, like, lose your skill <laughs> in two days. It's, it's not something that happens. You can always have a, a bad period or... A, a bad game here and there or a bad day even but it's not something that uh, you know turns so fast right it's also when you see teams like the mongols right obviously had a terrible run at katowice but look at their competition they were able in their region at im taipei to claim first place they were the guys who moved from mongolia to vietnam i think you know so they could get better practice conditions so they could play against better opponents same thing we had uh, a year ago with uh, Luminosity, what we have now with Tempo Storm as well. So you can see these teams are hungry, they're dedicated, they're motivated. And that's why they're improving so fast. That's why Tempo Storm was able to make a couple of upsets in Katowice. I mean, even past the group stage in, in, in a group like that, right? And you have a lot of teams, not just in, an, in the NA region, with, which most people like to, to bash on. In the, in the EU scene as well, you have teams... Uh, who are, you know, have the, the right conditions, but they're not improving maybe as rapidly as they could, right? So I think that stems from practice, not not utilizing practice in the best way they can, because then people have a bad run, then they resort to roster changes, which may or may not be the, the, the best solution more often than not. It's not the best solution, right? But it's the easiest solution. It's easiest to to. To pin it on the guy who has the the worst stats maybe and say oh this guy is holding us back guys it's like that's the reason it's not at all that we're making shit calls all the time and no one's focused and we're playing like idiots it's this guy so th those are like some of the problems when it um, when it comes to practice that's why i feel that the teams i mentioned are on the rise right now it's because they're doing a really good job uh, in uh, in practice. It's, it's not uh, like the one sole reason for it. I don't think that, let's say, VP is in a slump right now, maybe because they're not practicing hard enough or well enough or in the right way and so on. I mean, it, it all depends. I remember Navi in 1.6. In, 1 in practice, they would ask you to do best of three pistol rounds so they can try out different... Uh, strats or CT setups on their pistol rounds, right? Because obviously the pistol round is one of the most important rounds in, in the game as well. So yeah, th that was about it. I just felt uh, it's, it's something I, I wanted to talk about. So let me know what you think about the topic, guys, in, in the comment section or, or hit me up on, on uh, Twitter. Thanks for watching.